Welcome to the Birthing Your Book podcast, where we share this journey of experiencing full creative self-expression. I'm your host, Karen Hewson, book editor and coach for Soulpreneurs. And in this episode, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of how this book editing and coaching business dropped in. And I shared a little bit in the previous episode with my interview uh, as part of Rose Totary's book launch for Soulpreneur. And that was very much like the seed of feeling that sacral pull to like needing to be involved in that book. There was like a calling for me to be a part of birthing a Soulpreneur. And what that evolved into, as I shared in um, the last episode, was <laughs> the I don't know the universe guides basically gave me through Rose the idea for this business and she as we were leading up to that interview said you know there's going to be people listening here that will be interested in working with you and want to know like do you have services around this is this something that you do that they can work with you on and I was like oh my god like what if what if that could be a thing what if I could get paid to read books that I would like love to buy and read anyway what if I could get paid to you know support people birthing these incredible stories and messages out into the world to have you know that are called that are missions and purposes that I would love to amplify anyway and get to do that for a job and I had a moment this week um, which is the beginning of November 2022 where I sat down to plan out my week like I have done like for hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of, of weeks in the last six plus years of being an online business and trying to find the thing that would crack the flow of money and the flow of clients and the amplification and the expansion into, you know, the impact I desire to have. So this is like six years in the making and I sit down this week and I list out on one side of my paper um, my appointments for the week. And then on the other side of the paper, I start the column with clients and I get to list out five beautiful names of beautiful clients that I am working with this month. And for the first time ever in six years, I can say that I am fully booked out at my current capacity with my current structures and that the tasks involved with working with these clients include chatting with this person <laughs> about their business life and book and reading part of their book. I'm like, is this my job right now? Is this like legit my job right now that I get to hang out with these incredible people who are soul aligned clients, like on their sole purpose, sharing their wisdom, their experiences and their stories and I get to support them. I get to hold them and nurture them and help create that sense of safety and security so that they can share their message and their mission with the world and I just had this moment, first of all, of feeling incredibly gra grateful, but secondly, realizing that the dream had come true. Um, I have, again, planned out my week for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weeks, probably a thousand or more weeks in this exact same way. And even done those little manifesting exercises where you like write clients at the top of your page. And like I've had clients before but it never quite reached the like booked out stage it was all there was always still this like you know gap there was always this like I was always energetically in a place of lack really and saying like I want more I want more and I was far more focused on the gap than I was focused on um I guess appreciating and the gratitude for the what I was creating and it was because something was missing and it, it was my journey to keep pursuing the what was missing 
so that I could come to the place where I had gone through the journey of accumulating all of the skills and experience and knowledge so that when Rose began writing her book, it was this like absolute compelling feeling to say, I need to be involved. What support do you need? Can I read it? Can I edit it? What what can I do? And when she sent that, when she said yes, and when she sent the book to me to edit, I had no doubts. I had no feelings of lack or feeling like I couldn't do it or like, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? I was fully in my zone of genius. I was fully confident in my own ability and it was the first time when not only my last six seven years of business and my corporate career fed into what I was doing but that it also scooped up this other part of me that I had excluded from what I was doing for so long it scooped up this part of me from when I was a child and first was able to write words and began writing stories and pursued this um, career in writing fiction for seven <laughs> seven years seems to be a pattern. If anyone knows, like numero- numerologically, that's not the word. Um, with numerology or astrology or anything like what the seven year cycle is, um, it scooped up that part of me. It's so it really felt like someone said this the other day as well. It felt like all of me is here now. It felt like I needed to go through these different paths and I'm a four, six line in human design. So I feel like this is a little bit of the the six line, um, you know, getting to the roof moment where it's like, okay, we've gone through these different experimental phases and now we all get to come together. And so when I was editing Soulpreneur, I was fully in my zone of genius, fully in my power, fully grounded in my ability and because of the relationship that Rose and I had established prior to working together um, as mastermind sisters, as, um, you know, clients of each other and everything, it just really felt um, like I could be that open channel of whatever needs to come through me is an invitation to you. And it's going to do you a disservice if I filter that. And so it was one of the first times where I allowed myself to be fully grounded in my power and share everything that came through without couching it or curating it or filtering it um, to be re- because of fear of how it would be received. And so it was it was and continues to be a incredible relationship where I have this next level of like trust in my own ability in what channels through me in the invitations and, you know, the things that I share being a contributing, you know, the being something that contributes to the other person's journey as well. Um, so it was such an incredible moment to sit down after six, seven years and realize that I was booked out with these amazing clients with this business that didn't exist three months ago um and the thing that I want to keep speaking to today not only that I just dreamed of this for so long but the way in which the book editing business has manifested feels like I have not had to do I've not had to work for it it feels like it literally dropped in my lap and all I had to do was say yes and that's not the whole picture right because I've had to lean into things I've had to let go of things there has been a process of being in a place where I could fully receive what was being offered to me but in you know perfect divine timing uh it it has been offered to me on a silver platter from the universe at a time at which I am able to receive it. Um, So let me come back to how that all unfolded um, and bring you up to where we are today. So um, for the longest time through my journey 
with the six years of online business. We hear this all the time where we feel like we have to work to get clients, work to make money. There's so much um, marketing and messaging out there and I'm um, I've disconnected from, a, I've, I've curate what I connect to in the online space a lot. So I'm not sure how prevalent this still is, but definitely a couple of years ago it was when I was still really connected into the old paradigm way of like hustle and marketing and convincing people. And the phrase I want to share is the getting clients. How do I get clients? That was a phrase and that was a thing that like drove me and I think drives a lot of us. It's like, I want clients, so how do I get them? When it's not about, it's not a getting, it's a receiving. Um, and there's a whole episode probably to be said about the feminine and masculine energies and, and balance there. Um, because the getting isn't the push, 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 the hustle, hustle, hustle. To receive the clients, we need to be in the leaned back, ready to receive. And yes, we take inspired action to align ourselves and once we've aligned ourselves, then we are a match for those clients. And I even kind of want to, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> spit at myself for saying that phrase because we hear it all the time. And it's like, what the fuck does it mean to be a match for my clients? Because I am doing the things and I am trying and I am like doing this to the best of my ability and I don't have the clients. So what the hell do you mean that you just align yourself and you become a match for your clients? And there's so many phrases like this in the manifestation space and in new paradigm business. And if I don't call myself out on them, please call me out on them because I have gone through such deep phases of frustration in the last six, seven years of my online business journey and leaning into this new paradigm way of doing business where I'm like, but what do you mean? Like, what do you mean in your power? What do you mean like aligned action? What do you mean like inspired action? What do you mean being in alignment? Like all of these are just like words we have given to concepts. And there is a point at which like we feel, we can feel the truth behind the concept. We can feel the truth in the concept. But until we actually like, first of all, consciously can understand it and then can embody it and can experience it for ourselves to have that point of reference that's when it clicks there's like a couple little phases of like click 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 and then you feel like ah now i understand it not only do i consciously like understand the concept not only do i like energetically feel the difference but in my real 3d life i have experienced it happening and so, um, yes, <laughs> every time these phrases come out of my mouth, I simultaneously have gone through those and can understand what people mean now. Looking back, I know what people mean by these words, um, but it is a process to getting there. And I definitely want to help and support you to click, click, click your way to understanding um, what it means to experience this happening. So I'm going to keep sharing about how the book business and the clients dropped in. And I want to you to really feel into it as a, this is what is possible because it still feels a little bit magic to me. It still feels like, you know, I'm not going to go out there claiming I know how to, how to coach you to get the same result. Cause I don't even flipping know how it ended up happening for me. So let me go through and share and then I might come back to that point of like, I can't teach you to do this. I don't know what happened. Like what I did was I continually came back to my human design, like sacral authority. And I continually came back to, does this feel like a hell sacral? Yes. Does this feel like it's in alignment? And I let go of anything that wasn't and I leaned into everything that felt like a hell yes. That's the only like thing I can look back and see that I did. And I, and that, that's the only tangible thing that I'm like, if I was to point to something, that is what I felt like I was doing in the lead up to this all unfolding. 
So, as you know, what happened was um, Rose started writing her book and she started sharing about her book on stories. And I went, oh, my God, I need to be involved in this book. And then when we got to the point of doing the book launch and the interview, she voice messaged me and was basically like, "Um, do you have any thoughts about like book services and editing services? Because people are going to listen to what we've done together and want to work with you and want to know how to work with you. And I'm pretty sure it was like the day before she messages me, I have been on a call with my beautiful support queen, Ebony Tippany, and we have outlined a work with me page um, in as a Canva web page. Super simple, simple, super easy. We've popped together like I want one place where if people want to work with me, they just have the information. It's like, these are the three things. And here's, it's like, it's, it's more of a, maybe you could call it a landing page, but it's not going into like the super complicated sales page. It was simply like, if people are interested in wanting to know how to work with me, this is going to give them a bit of information about that so that they can then get in touch and message me if they're interested. And so we'd outlined that page and then Rose messages me about these book services and I was like, yeah, I, yes, let's, sacral yes, let's do that. And so what ended up kind of dropping in, and again, I want to like put dropping in as a like little footnote reference of what the hell does that mean um, when it comes to new paradigm manifestation, Um And it's essentially one of those moments where you get that like idea drop in that, you know, um, aha moment that eyes light up like, oh, my God, I could do that. Like it could look like that. I could do it that way. Um, And so that's what I mean when we when I say like stuff dropped in. Um, And I was like, yeah, I could do book coach like I could do book editing and I could coach people through writing a book and we could do like a one-off like intensive if people just wanted to find out more about what the book process is. So I like almost instantly from her sharing what she thought my offers could look like, I had picked that up and run with it. I had taken the template that Ebony and I had put together and I created a editing services web page like all within the matter of a week, I think. And so I think Rose had messaged me maybe on the Tuesday. We were having our interview on the Friday and literally by the Friday or the following Monday, like I had all of this created. It like, on reflection, it happens so quickly. And yet I get so lit up and so excited when this stuff drops in that I can't not move forward on it. It's like, I get so excited about it and that's all I want to do and that's all I want to work on and it needs to come through me. And so for me, like waiting on it and sitting on it would be so much harder (laughs) than allowing myself to play in the possibility of what if I did have editing services. Um, And so the web page got put together Uh, Needless to say, the original template that Ebony and I put together for my like intuitive life and business coaching page never has seen the light of day. And we're actually now about to delete it. It was essentially a template for the editing services. The editing services just hadn't dropped in yet at the time Ebony and I were working on it. And so this is another little concept that I am going to do an episode on where it's the idea of something is sometimes is sometimes so much more important than the completion and the execution of the thing. So I was meant to work with Ebony on the page in the context of my business coaching But the purpose of getting it to the point we did was so that it would become a template for my editing services. It was never supposed to be the place for my business coaching because little did I know that was about to completely fall away and be released. Um, And yet if I had stayed attached to the idea of I've got this you know, work with me page for my business services. Like I need to finish that. I can't work on my editing stuff. I need to finish what I started. That wouldn't have been a complete, like 
distraction from the path I was being led down. And that wouldn't have allowed the editing services to come in because I wouldn't have given it the attention. I wouldn't have held the space for it. I would have said, no, I mean, that's a nice idea, Rose, but, you know, I, I don't, I can't fit that in right now. I don't have time for that. I need to finish these other tasks first. And I would have been sat in this tension and in this like struggle between the thing I had started that I thought the path I thought I was going to forwards on versus the path I was actually being called down. And so that's just a quick thing to really reflect on for yourself whenever you feel like you're being pulled forward, but you've got things that need to be finished. It's like, what if the what if you needed to do this thing only up until this point so that it sets you up for what was to come that you couldn't even realize was to come at the time so these these tasks instead of having to finish everything and complete absolutely everything um, they become stepping stones to the next part of the process and so we don't have to finish everything yes we do want to um, make sure that we are finishing some things and the aligned things but I think so often it, we've had it drilled into us that we need to finish what we start stay true to our word like honor what we've said we would do instead of opening up to the possibility of the next thing of it evolving and shifting um so I'm going to come back to the point and try not to go off on a slightly different tangent because we want to have one complete episode today um so that's what happened with the web page is that I had this template there that we'd already done that made throwing together the editing services page really quick and easy um it kind of just came through um I'll do an episode sometime on pricing because um I really just felt into the numbers and I felt like they again I felt like I was just given the numbers in my head I thought about it and the number came in and I was clear enough without the like doubt and conditioning and one you know <laughs> wondering to wade through um that this was the number and I just ran with it um I also do want to caveat here though if you are familiar with human design I am a sacral authority I am not an emotional authority so um and I think there's part of my design which means I am gifted with a really strong discernment so I can make decisions really quickly I can discern like when things drop in really quickly if this is a yes no and I can move on it quite quickly that's because of my human design please consider your own design and what is in alignment for you um, and make sure that you know your own process for how things drop in, when they drop in, and the process you go through to make sure that that is an aligned idea. It's like, is it a yes? And when is the right timing to take action on it? Find out like what those steps are for you. Um, and that is how you would mimic the process that I have gone through because I have adapted that to my design to know when something is a yes for me and when the aligned time is to move on it. And those have really been the keys, but they are going to be different depending on what your human design is. Um, and I'll make sure that we put uh, links to the human, to your human design stuff um, in the show notes. So if you don't know what your human design is, or you want to go a little deeper into what your authority is, um, I actually did an episode with Rose um, in the last season of the podcast that talks all about your human design authority, which is pretty fun. Um, so that's what happened leading up to that interview. And then we had the interview and it was delicious. And I loved sharing all of the ways that we worked together. That was in such a new paradigm model of empowering the the author empowering you as the writer to be fully creatively self-expressed for you to have the creative control for you to have the decision on all of you know the final decision on all of the stylistic things like um and also to work and collaborate in a way that aligns and supports 
both of our human designs and that was something that Ruth uh, that Ruth that Rose and I did absolutely beautifully and that um yeah I'm really excited that we were able to share in that interview and um Rose will actually be coming on the podcast again uh in December as part of the launch of her fiction series and we're going to talk about how we adapted collaborating together on fiction compared to her solopreneur non-fiction book so that's going to be really fun but what happened after that interview um was was that I had the mastermind call for um the mastermind I'm a part of with Rose incidentally and that was on the Wednesday so I think we had our interview on the Friday and then we caught up on the Wednesday for our weekly call and what happened was I was sharing all of the stuff around the book editing that was dropping in and that I had just picked up and run with and wasn't even pausing to doubt myself or wonder how it was going to work or any of that I was just picking it up and running with it and I started talking about it as my new business and I used the phrase like my new business, this is going to be a new business, like book editing, what is even going on? And then I started to talk about it being, you know, a business alongside my life and business and business coaching. And I was like, how is this going to work? And then we leant a bit more into the book editing And then the phrase slipped out of my mouth when I was describing my life and business coaching and I described it as my old business. And I was like, oh, crap. Like I came into this call being like, I can do this book editing thing alongside what I've already got going on. I've spent six years, guys, six, more than six years. It'll be seven years in April. So six and a half years six and a half years working on this business, working towards this thing, building it up, trying to figure it out, um, learning all these things, you know, rehashing my messaging and my ideal client and reshaping my offers. So many times I have lost count. Um, I will dive into all of this in different ways ways as we go forward on this podcast which I'm really excited to share because it was a fucking journey (laughs) um all for a divine purpose but like being in it is real it is real and so I was like well first of all I'm like I am not prepared to let all that go I'm not prepared to let all of that like hard work and hustle and like commitment to figuring it out and getting to a place where it works and it's aligned and especially the last two or three years going through the cycle of is this in alignment yes or no okay follow the thing that's aligned work on it work on it put it out there is this still in alignment how could it feel better how could it feel more fun how could it feel more spacious what is the experience I'm wanting to create does this feel like it no keep going keep aligning keep letting go of the things that are holding me back And like going through all of this and all of this and all of this to then just let it all go. And so I got to this point on the call where I suddenly called the business I had been committed to for six years, my old business. And I was just like, well, shit. (laughs) Apparently, I said, that's my old business now and book editing is my new business. And what on earth is going on? Now, one of the things, because of how I had continued to align over the last two to three years and continued to commit to that alignment and open up to guidance, to the universe, to, um, you know, divine timing and spirituality and everything, um, there was a level of trust that I had built up in the feeling and the, that I received when these things drop in. There is a knowing and there is a clarity and there is a clear energy when these things drop in for me. It might feel different to you, but for me, um, that when I spoke those words, I realized that I was being drawn forward. And it was like, I leaned into that and not in a like hustly lean in way, but I leaned into the possibility. I played with, I decided, I chose to play in the possibility 
what if this was my new business? What if that what became my old business? And I actually in my Instagram highlights under book editing, the very first story slide that I posted up after this call with my mastermind was what if this thing that lights you up takes off? And that was the question that I left the mastermind call with and that I leaned into a little bit in the call. It was like, what if this book editing thing takes off? What if it takes off? Would I want to do life and business coaching? Would I want to do monthly intuition circles of which I had one that I was promoting at that point in time off the back of one I'd done that was really successful and like the picture perfect launch that I had dreamed of for six years um, where people signed up as soon as I announced it. People signed up like right the way through the week beforehand. People signed up the day before. People signed up the day of. It was like picture perfect way I have dreamed of a launch going. And so I decided to do it again because we do – We repeat what works, right? Um, Not always, by the way, we we lean into what's aligned. Um, We don't just stay where we are and repeat what works all the time because that can keep us where we are. And do we want to be there or do we want to keep expanding? There is, of course, nuance to that conversation. Um, But I was in the middle of launching this new Next Intuition Circle and yet I was presented with this question of like, what if this book editing thing takes off? And I had to ask myself, if that took off, would I care about doing life and business coaching? Would I care about running intuition circles? Would I care about all these other offers that I had put out there? And the answer was a very clear sacral no. It was like, if I could just edit books (laughs) and be paid to edit people's books that I would buy anyway and would love to share about and amplify the message of anyway, then I would not care about doing my old business. And that really gave me the answer as well. And so that's another thing, you know, you can, there's a whole lot of questions we could probably pull out as journal prompts um, from this episode in the way that I navigated, like letting go of a business that I had spent six years of my life committed to and leaning into the possibility of, What if this book editing thing took off? Needless to say, almost three months later, the book editing thing is for sure taking off. (laughs) Um, Even at the time that I was, you know, speaking in the mastermind group about it, they were kind of like, we think it already has. Like all of my mastermind sisters are like, yeah, it it is taking off. Like this is not a what ifs question. Um, And that's how I leaned into the possibility of I didn't consciously make a decision to let go of the of the previous business. But the the possibility that I played in was what if it takes off and I leaned into that. And that's where I kept my kept my energy. That's where I directed my energy was like, what if it did take off? What if I could just do this? What if all like what if I did just work with people read it like coaching them through writing their books um, and editing their books and helping them get their messages out into the world that are so, that's so needed. Um, And so after that mastermind call, after I was like processing and integrating and coming to terms with, holy crap, I think I have this whole new business. And again, I stayed with the, I think I, it took a very long time well not a long time. It took a while for me to like fully own the decision, right? It started off as a like new business. What if this takes off? What if that becomes my old business? I think this is my new business. I think that's my old business. Like it's it slowly shifted um, because it was a scary thing. It was a scary like, oh my gosh, could not have, would not have even thought of this for myself. Which on reflection is actually bonkers because it is so perfect for me. (laughs) But this is the piece. This is coming back to one of the points I wanted to make in this episode. If I had thought to myself 
that I wanted to be a book editor and I wanted to edit the books of solopreneurs around the world who have online businesses and have these soul callings and have had these incredible, you know, experiences and journeys of self-healing and personal growth to share with the world and that that was a thing that I wanted to do if I had like consciously come to it and been like this is a thing I want to do I would have come at, come to it with an energy of okay I want x how do I get it what do I need to do in order to receive what I am wanting and the focus would have been on me hustling me working me doing me having to do a thing before I can receive the clients before I'm allowed to be this person have this business do this thing now that's the energy and that's the perspective through which I created and drove my online business for six years and so the thing that was a complete mindfuck and to be honest still is is how this book editing has felt like it's literally been, I've just been asked. The universe is like, do you want to do this thing? Like literally through Rose voice messaging me. Do you want to have editing services? They could look like this, this, and this. Yep, that sounds fun. Yes, Sacral says yes, that would be exciting. What if I did that? It's come to me and and each of <laughs> Each of my clients has come to me that way where I have not felt like I have been in this place of wanting clients. Well, I've, like I've been playing in the possibility of like having clients. So that's an interesting reflection just as I'm speaking with you now. I've been playing in the possibility of like, what if this was a thing? What if I had clients where I did this with them? But at no point was I okay, I want clients. Let's figure out how to get clients. What do I need to do in order to attract clients? I never, I was never there. And yet my entire six year business, that's like the only place I was. Now, like I said earlier, I don't have any answers. I am just like in this point, like reflecting and sharing with you the experience of how the editing business has dropped in versus the experience of my online business the last six years. And I'm observing the difference and I'm sort of leaning into like, what is there to learn about this? Because early on, like around the time of that mastermind call, or I think just afterwards, as I was integrating and processing, this hit me. I was like, the, I'm not trying to do anything with the book editing. There's no feelings like of lacking anything. There's no like needing clients, needing money, wanting things like what do I need to do? It was it was all almost coming to me before I even like felt the lack of not having it. I don't even know if that's a thing, but um you know, I was so caught up with enjoying the launch of Soulpreneur and being like team hype squad for that launch and just enjoying it and celebrating it and amplifying it that by me showing up and sharing when I was editing by me showing up and sharing as the book editing thing dropped in by me showing up and sharing the launch and sharing these conversations Rose was having with you know the team behind the scenes of her launch by me sharing all of those things I was sharing about I was marketing myself and I was sharing social proof and testimonials and all of the other structural things. But I was doing it, I was doing it without realizing that was what I was doing. Um, and this happens a lot when I've been leaning into this like intuitive led business, but intuitive led life. If we look at it in context of business, though, Every time I have let my intuition lead and I have leaned into what would be fun for this launch, um, what would be, what do I feel like doing and leaned into that with really clear energy. When I have looked back on what I ended up doing, I can see the strategy in it. I can see how 
I've promoted myself. I can see how I've marketed myself. And yet the intention when I went into it was not to be strategic. The intention was to be intuitive and be led and guided. And so again, with the with the book editing business dropping in compared to how I had tried and worked and like had to get and had to give and had to do things in order to receive the book editing really felt like it was just an opportunity that was right that I walked past (laughs) that someone like held out and said hey do you want to do you want to go do this this sounds fun and I'm like holy crap yes and also it could look like this it felt like a true like collaboration without any of the without any of that like lack and hustle and I can imagine from being in that place for so long myself that hearing that is just like fine bitch but like how (laughs) like that's all very fine for you but like how and what the fuck And when is it going to happen for me? So I just wanted to like speak from my past self for a minute because I am, I'm in this headspace where I'm like, how is this even happening? What is even going on? And at the same time, just being absolutely here for it. And I'm not about to say no, I'm like embracing it all. And I really want to share I want to share it with you and I also want to share it with you in contrast to where I have been for six years, which has not been this place <laughs> and which I know is where a lot of um, a lot of you might be, where a lot of you have been, where you might find yourself back in because we go through our journey in a cyclical way. So the, yeah, the book editing business is very much dropped in in a way that Um, the business itself, the opportunity to edit the first book that then became the book editing business and the clients dropping in since has been something where I don't feel like I've had to work for it. Now, that is a feeling of my experience because you could argue that I've spent six years working for it and preparing for it and being ready to receive it. And I've had, you know, 10 years of corporate and I've had seven years of fiction writing prior to that. And so it, it, it's again, it's that Steve Jobs quote, isn't it? Where you can't connect the dots looking forward, but you can connect them looking backwards. And so the, the most I can say is that it's a leaning into an alignment and it's a trust in the process and it's a trust in your journey. And the other thing I really believe and advocate for is that we can create the experience we desire no matter where we are in our journey. Like even even if we are in the place where we, you know, desire clients and we desire more income, we can still create a really beautiful experience being where we are. So I just want to quickly shift on to um, how my clients have sort of manifested because I find this super fascinating Um, because again I, I don't feel like I've had to like market or advertise and this is also evidence of the mir- the myriad of ways that clients can come to you um, outside of the the path that we're so taught to create with our social media, with our email lists, with our free offers and with our marketing. And it's like, of course, clients can come that way. But I feel like strategically, we're taught that there's this path we're going to take people through. And in reality, I don't think there's many people in our audiences who follow us the entire length of the journey. I think what more often what happens is that they dip in and out and they see a part of the the, the journey that we're presenting. And that's perfect and that's divine and, and people don't actually need to follow us on the whole journey to convert or be convinced or any of those um, sort of more like old paradigm like ways of marketing and selling. So um, Rose is my first beautiful editing client that, like I said, I felt the call I saw was already in her circle, already connected with her, 
we already had a relationship established and I saw her writing her book and I literally reached out to her after my sacral and guides had compelled me to to be like can I please help you (laughs) can I please support you in this book and she had been thinking of me as well as a possibility for editing the book and so that happened very divinely that's all I can say is we both got the little the little nudge dropped in our heads from our guides and we took the inspired action and it all unfolded um Another book client of mine uh, heard about me through a friend. So another beautiful soul, Nicole Middleton, who's in the mastermind with me, she was in another group with someone who I had been in a program with a couple years ago. So two or so years ago, we'd been in this like um, money manifestation program together. And so she remembered me from that. And now she's in this group with Nicole and Nicole is telling her about how I'm doing this book editing and how Nicole's really excited for me to edit her book when she gets to the point of her book needing editing. And then, um, that new client was like, Oh my gosh, that would be perfect. I want to write my book. So this was very much my like four line in human design that like web networked web of, you know, the people who know you, who know the thing you're doing are going to talk to the people and they're going to be the perfect match and they're going to, it's all the referral word of mouth, like network thing. So that's how my second uh, big book client, like full partnership came about. Um, And then, like I said, Nicole herself is writing a book and she um, is very much like, I want you to be my editor at the point that that aligns. Um, and I'd also, when I'd very first shared about my editing on my Instagram, had an, a past client of mine reach out and say, oh my gosh, I would love for you to edit my book. And she had just started writing it, but it wasn't a right now thing. Um, and she has ended up, working with me this month so that was again something a kind of little nod from the universe a a couple months ago to be like yep you're on the right path people are interested this is a thing um and now she's working with me a couple months later um and I've had another client that I've had a consult call with about working with her on her book and she was someone um who was following me on Instagram um, and I had had, I'd met her in person once when we had a lunch together in Wellington. And so we kind of knew of each other, I suppose. And yeah, again, she's written a whole bunch of a book and it then got sort of paused and she's wanting to pick it up and run with it again. So again, we're, we're sort of, um, not waiting for divine timing, but, um, we just, uh, connected there and, and, you know, (laughs) whenever the time is right sort of thing. Um, But the thing that I observed, not just with the book editing business, but over probably the last year, whenever I've put out offers that have been like the aligned path for me, even if it's the offer that's going to lead to the next thing that's going to lead to the next thing, and this offer isn't the thing forever, it's just the thing for now, I've got an immediate like nod from the universe is what it's felt like. So this time last year, maybe it was even a little bit more than a year ago, I did a uh, like women's circle coaching for one month. And that was the first thing that I had launched or put out in the world that I had somebody buy it right away. I'd put it out, I promoted it, and then somebody bought it like within 24 hours. And I was just like, holy crap, this is so exciting. What is even going on? Um, And so that was one thing. And then I did um, my Integrate program over January last year. Um, And that program is still floating around. I'm not sure how that's going to land. 
this yeah idea of supporting people to like integrate their journey and their experiences so that we can really open up to the possibilities of what's coming and allow ourselves not to be held back or fearful of the past repeating itself but really taking the lessons from what we've experienced and being able to move forward like unencumbered from them um and again that was a program where I launched it and had like an immediate response. And even when I talked about doing a second round of it recently, I had someone, a past student of it in my DMs going, oh my gosh, this would be amazing. Um, And this is something that I've like really never had. Like I have felt previously, like I've had to really work hard for clients. I've had to really be consistent at speaking about the offer to the offer, around the offer, um and you know putting out the content all the time and to then to then have something drop in whereas you know working this new way that I am where I have the, I'm you know I'm open enough to receive I think there was a lot of clearing out that I needed to do um to get to the point where I was really open to receive and to act on these new things um and to stay in alignment without all of the old conditioning and like fear and baggage coming in to like hijack it or hijack the experience of it. Um, and I was, you know, I had these, these little offers, these little points along the way where as soon as I would mention it or promote it or whatever, the same for the intuition circle that I already spoke about again, had people signing up for it right away. And I'm just like, what is even happening right now? This is not a like this has not become normalized in my reality. Like this is still a like, oh my gosh, I put out an offer and someone's interested right away. Like what even is my life? Like it's still that level of exciting. It is not like a normal thing for me yet. I know it will become a normal thing and I hope I never lose the excitement of it. Um, And so as the book editing was dropping in and Again, I would share the tiniest little thing on my stories about being a book editor and I would have a message in my DMs from someone being like, oh my gosh, I would love for you to edit my book. I'm just like, I'm sorry, what now? (laughs) Who are you and what is happening? (laughs) And it's not necessarily that they instantly became a client and converted right there on the spot, but it was these little nods from the universe to be like, yep, keep going. You're on the right path. You know, there are people already in your sphere, not that there has to be. Again, this was just the signs that I was receiving and the way that like I've recognized for me that I get the nod back Um, because previously it very much felt like I was, you know, doing the things and doing my best to be in alignment and act on my inspired actions And yet I was not getting it right. It felt like for the longest time I was not getting it right. And then with these things, when I did it, there was like an immediate like, yes, from the universe, like, you've got it. You did it right. You know, you you heard us. You interpreted this message correctly. You've stayed in alignment long enough to like create it and birth it out into the world in a way that is aligned and is the way that is meant for you. And there's a lot between putting something out in the world and actually receiving the idea for like conditioning and ego and fear and limitations to come in and hijack us. And so it feels like I'm really, really proud of myself for sticking it out for almost seven years for this to manifest. Um, And, you know, I could say... I could spin it and say that, you know, I had the idea for an editing business drop in three months ago and now three months later I'm fully booked out. And that is completely out of context. (laughs) That is completely out of context. And like I see people sharing in that way online on Instagram and it really bothers me because it doesn't give us a sort of true picture of their journey and and it it gives a false it sets false expectations and so that's something else that I'm really excited to share 
on the podcast is like all the crazy things that are manifesting right now and holy crap, but also the real behind the scenes of, hey, I'm actually booked out and it's amazing. And also the spaciousness I had created in my life is now full and I'm missing that spaciousness. I'm craving that spaciousness. So how am I going to navigate being busy and booked out and shift that to being spacious and booked out and hold what I've received and expand to be able to hold more and also have the spacious experience of life that I desire Um, while giving you the contrast of I can't believe this is my life now because for six years I've dreamed of it happening (laughs) and for six years it didn't feel like it was happening Um, and you know we hear the like your success is inevitable and that was the motto in a 12-month mastermind I was in in 2019 and it's like you you believe it as much as you're able to believe it but when it actually starts happening there is this amount of disbelief in your like body where you're like are you sure this is real and happening to me like what is actually happening right now um so yes that is how the book editing business has dropped in that is how you know just month by month leaning into the possibility celebrating the journey I'm on celebrating the journey that I get to share with my clients um and sharing the desire I have to be doing this work has you know put me in this beautiful place of receiving clients and aligning with clients and just getting to speak with people about their books so um if you are interested in working with me because I am booked out this month in November I am um looking to restructure my offers a little bit so I can support more people I would love for you to get in touch um there'll be you know, information in the show notes for how to do that. Um, And if you feel called to, like, if any of this has resonated with you and there's, like, part of your journey or story you would like, you know, to share off the back of this, then um, please do because we are all here to experience full creative self-expression. So whether that goes into your journal, whether that goes into a social media post, whether you go live and start riffing on it, whether you share in your stories, um, please tag me. I would absolutely love to like to see it and to continue having the conversation and just see what sharing my journey and my perspective um is is bringing up for you so thank you so much for joining me and i will see you in the next episode if this has resonated with you i would be so grateful if you could share this episode subscribe to the podcast share it out onto social media send it to a friend who you think might be interested if you do share it on social media you are absolutely welcome to tag me you can find me at karen hewson on instagram and i'm around about the place on other socials at karen hewson as well if you're interested in learning more about me and more about how to work with me and what i'm up to then please do check out the show notes and we'll make sure that all of the links to all of my things are there for you to have a look at so thank you so much for listening and let's go on this adventure that is birthing your book podcast where we share this journey of experiencing full creative self-expression